in the book of Exodus, chapter 29. The book of Exodus, not chapter 29, chapter 26. The book of Exodus, chapter 26, and verse 36. Exodus, chapter 26, and verse 36. It says, And that thou shalt make an hanging for the door of the tent of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and a fine twine linen wrought with needlework. So we see that the outer hanging that was the entrance into the earthly sanctuary was made of needlework and it was very colorful like the rainbow. We also see another piece of clothing that is made or another garment that is made out of needlework. And we find it in the book of Exodus again chapter 28 but this time we'll be looking at verse 39. Exodus chapter 28 and verse 39. And it says, And thou shalt embroider the coat, and thou shalt embroider the coat of fine linen, and thou shalt make the mitre of fine linen, and thou shalt make the girdle of needlework. This girdle of needlework was for Aaron, the high priest of the sanctuary. Now this gets more interesting. So anytime we see the word needlework in the Bible, it's used in connection with the sanctuary. The entrances of the sanctuary and the actual garments that are covering the high priest himself. And both and all of these works that are done in needlework are always colorful like the rainbow. Did you know that the rainbow actually represents the covenant that God has made with his children? This covenant is found in Jesus Christ. We saw earlier in Exodus chapter 2 verse 7 and 8. For it's the blood of Jesus through which the promises are... It's, it's through the blood of Jesus that all the promises of God are fulfilled in our lives. Why? Do, I just want to make a small note here. Why do you think God uses a rainbow? Well, you know something? No man can look at the direct glory of God. But we are told in the book of, first jo um, book of John, John chapter 1, John chapter 1, John chapter 1 and verse 14, I believe it is. John chapter 1 and verse 14. That, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory and we beheld the glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So when you see Jesus, you see the actual glory of the Father. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, according to Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9. Jesus is like a prism. You know, we can't look at the sun during the new, noon day in all of its brightness. It's too bright for us. But you, if you were to hold a prism up to that sun and then look on the ground, you would see a rainbow being casted on the ground. And if you looked at that rainbow, it would be as if you were looking directly at the sun because the light that's coming from that prism is from the sun. And that's what Jesus Christ is like. Jesus Christ manifests all the characteristics of God the Father and that's what the rainbow symbolizes. I just wanted to throw in that note. But nonetheless, the needlework... The needlework was connected simply with the sanctuary, with the, with the entrance of the sanctuary, and with the garments that the high priest himself wore. And the church is wearing this need, garment of needlework according to Psalms chapter 45 and verse 14. Remember, it says, She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. This simply means that God's church his church that keep his commandments and have the faith of Jesus Christ believe in the work of the sanctuary. And they believe in the work of the high priest. And we are told in the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 8 and verse, and verse 1, Now all the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest which is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. The high priest in the heavenly sanctuary. Well, who is this high priest? Well, we're told in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 34. Now we're looking to find out who the high priest is that stands on the right hand of the throne of God. In the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 34, it says, Who is he that condemneth? 
It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even set at the right hand of the throne of God, who also maketh intercession for us. End of quote. Christ Jesus is our high priest. He is the one that ascended into heaven and has now entered into the heavenly sanctuary and is interceding before God's heavenly throne because that is where the rainbow is present. If you don't believe that, turn your Bibles to the book of Revelations. The book of Revelations, the book of Revelations, the fourth chapter. Revelations chapter 4, starting at verse 2. And it says, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne, and he that sat was like to look, was to look upon like jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. God's remnant church believes in the doctrine that there is a heavenly sanctuary, and there is a heavenly sanctuary, and by faith. God's remnant church follows Christ into his sanctuary, into his high priestly ministry, before the throne of God, which is in the most holy place. That's what it's talking about in Psalms chapter 45 and verse 14, when it talks about she shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. But notice what follows that statement. It says, the virgins, that the virgins, her companions that follow her shall be brought unto thee. Notice that it didn't say, notice that it says the virgins, those who are the companions of God's church, those who are following God's church, there are some specific virgins that are following this message of the heavenly sanctuary that God's church teaches. There are some virgins that shall be brought unto the king. That's according to Psalms chapter 45 and verse 14. And we are told that these virgins, in verse 15, shall become with gladness and rejoicing before God, and they shall enter into the king's palace. You see that in Psalms chapter 45 and verse 15. The question is, who are these virgins that are following the teachings, the doctrines of God's church? Well, turn your Bibles to the book of Revelations chapter 14. Revelations chapter 14 and verse 1. And it says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their forehead. It goes on to say now in verse 3, And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man was able to learn that song but the hundred and forty-four thousand which were redeemed from a which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, Jesus Christ, the high priest, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first roots unto God and to the Lamb. Who are these virgins that follow God's church? Well, they are the ones who by faith follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. And we know that Jesus Christ is the Lamb from John chapter 1 and verse 29, which says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. And we also learn that Christ Jesus is our high priest. So if these virgins follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth, this means that these virgins are following the high priest wherever he goes in the heavenly sanctuary. God has a people. The 144,000 will be those who are following Christ step by step in his ministry in the, in the heavenly sanctuary. And most of all, by faith, they are looking forward to the time when Christ will finish the work of the atonement, blot out our sins forever, and then place upon humanity the finishing touch of perfection by sealing up the image of God in us and then one day giving us immortality. And these are those who will come before the king with rejoicing. For as we saw in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 3, they will sing a new song before the throne and the four beasts and the elders that no man can learn except for the 144,000. And that sounds like a lot of gladness and rejoicing to me in the king's palace. Because we were told.